So NHL free agency is here and that means bags are going to be thrown out. Over 1.2 billion in contract dollars have already been offered and you know what? St. Louis is going to be leading the charge here. We have spent $1 million and where did we spend that money? Sperry Kapanen. Yep, that's what St. Louis is up to. We made two trades today. It's July 2nd. That's the day I'm recording this video. So I'm recording it after the first day of free agency and there's no question about it. The Nashville Predators are making moves. They're the big winners of day number one. That team was cooking. Toronto, not going to lie, don't really know what you're cooking. The signings make sense. Like Tanev and Oliver Ekman Larson, you know what? You need help on your defense. The term and the actual dollar amount, I don't know what you're cooking up there. Tanev's a great player, but why are you giving him such a long contract? I don't know what you're cooking up. But as you can see, we don't have the Everett Elks today. We don't have the Moncton Tigers. Instead, it's going to be the Wisconsin Wildcats. We're full of zero overall players, and today we're going to win them a Stanley Cup through the wheel of NHL free agency. So how is this going to work? Well, I'm going to spin this wheel right here. We have 32 NHL teams and then the remaining free agents. And honestly, this is the perfect way to start today's video we're going to be landing on free agents so that means i can select any remaining free agent in the nhl now i feel like landing on the remaining free agents is actually the perfect way to start a video like this and although there's a lot of great players here there's one clear selection and joe pavelski it's not going to be you because we're under the assumption that you're retiring here it's unofficial but i mean cut to the chase joe pavelski's not going to play any more games in the nhl he's an elite player but his career is up vladimir tarasenko don't really know how you're still a free agent here i don't understand why nobody ever signs you on day number one but you know what you're gonna be the first guy we select here Vladimir Tarasenko a St. Louis legend welcome to the Wisconsin Wildcats so Vladimir Tarasenko you can be the first player on the Wisconsin Wildcats here a two-time Stanley Cup champion he just won with Florida I am very surprised nobody's picked you up like you were great with Florida this season even with Ottawa although that team is a complete dumpster fire you actually had some decent numbers there so somebody pick up Vladimir Tarasenko he can help you win a Stanley Cup but that's enough talking about Vladimir Tarasenko let's go ahead and simulate the season and ideally win a couple games we all know that's not going to happen but while the season simulates here if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're trying to hit 70k by the end of the month so if you don't subscribe we won't be able to do that so a couple magical things happened this season number one we actually got through the entire season here like that never happens the wisconsin wildcats an 0-82 record we didn't score any goals but none of that matters vladimir tarasenko did you record any shots this season i highly doubt it it doesn't look like you did i do think we had one player record a shot never mind nobody recorded a shot here but that's perfectly fine you know why because the st louis blues just re-signed busnevich so i'm happy He's sticking around for the next six years at $8 million. I think the funniest thing about all this, though, is two minutes before I started this recording, I was talking about how Busnevich is more than likely going to get traded away. But here we are, Busnevich is back. Robert Thomas, Jordan Cairo, Busnevich, the big three sticking around. The St. Louis Blues are officially back, and we're probably going to finish outside the wild card, if I'm being completely honest. Like, let's face it, ain't no way St. Louis is finishing top three in the Central. Dallas is ahead of us, Colorado is ahead of us, Nashville is ahead of us. And then depending on what Winnipeg looks like, yeah, it could be a tough year for the boys. But you know what? I believe in Dougie. I believe in the core. We're going to be back. But you know what? We can worry about Busnevich and my St. Louis Blues later. We got to continue with this video. We're going to be spinning the wheel here. And now we're landing on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Chris Tanev, I think we're going to be bringing you to the team here. It's either you or OEL, and I think I'd rather have Chris Tanev. I actually know for a fact I'd rather have Chris Tanev. So the Leafs have worked on their defensive core over the offseason. Joseph Wall is going to be sticking around. OEL, he's a decent defenseman. But you know what? Out of all these guys, we got to go with Chris Tanev here. We need a good defensive defenseman on this team, and he's going to be helping us a ton, especially since he's probably going to play number one line center mints this season. Like, we have two NHL players. Tanev, I want you playing center. So, you know what? I'm actually changing my mind. We're not taking Chris Tanev because we need a good goaltender. And you know what? Toronto actually picked up a pretty solid goaltender in free agency. That was Stolarz. So, Stolarz, you got to be our goaltender here. 84 overall. I'm definitely taking Stolarz over Chris Tanev. We need a good goaltender. And let's face it, it wasn't the greatest goaltending free agency class. So yeah, Stolarz, you're going to be a great pickup for us. Chris Tanev, you're going to go down as one of the greatest Wisconsin Wildcats of all time. So Vladimir Tarasenko, by us not bringing Chris Tanev to the team, you're going to be stuck with zero overalls once again here. However, the goaltending is definitely taking a massive upgrade here. Stolarz, you were a great goaltender with the Florida Panthers. You just won yourself a Stanley Cup, but now it's time to win one with the Wisconsin Wildcats. I mean, not this season. Clearly, we don't have a hope of even winning a game here. But you know what? Put up numbers. Just do that for me. Now, I'm not really overly surprised that we didn't score any goals this season. Like, let's face it. We didn't give Vladimir Tarasenko an offensive teammate. We did have a decent enough goaltender, though. Stolarz, I'm expecting you to do something. Hold on. Wait a second. Vladimir Tarasenko's taking one shot out here. Meanwhile, Stolarz, an 894 and a 684. I'll definitely take it. Like, look at Joe NHL here. Bro is not putting up good numbers whatsoever. I also do want to mention, his name is actually Joe NHL. I went through every single one of these zero overall players and I made them a Joe NHL. So Jordan NHL, we don't have to deal with that nonsense. 
we got the legend and joe back so on top of having joe we're gonna see the toronto maple Leafs win the stanley cup here yeah this isn't realistic let's get ready for next season like i'm sorry but i am not seeing the toronto maple leafs win the stanley cup in year number two here that's just not happening the dallas stars really didn't do too much during free agency but we're gonna be able to pick a couple guys up here now i'm not really too sure why so we're gonna pick up a couple players from the dallas stars we're only allowed to pick up one here but i already know who that one player is gonna be it's gonna be matt duchene because technically he was a free agent but he just re-signed with the dallas stars so matt duchene welcome to the wisconsin wildcats i mean as i'm matt duchene like who do we really have here this team didn't have too much money to work with dumba i guess you're on the Dallas Stars so we could have taken you but you know what I'm happy with the selection we made so I'm fully expecting the offense to be producing here like Matt Duchesne alongside Vladimir Tarasenko yeah we don't have a complete forward line and yeah we don't even have a first pairing defense but we have two solid forwards on this team and that should be enough for us to score a couple goals now I think we all saw this coming it was only a matter of time like we got through two straight seasons of no issues but now the game's going to be freezing so we got to spin that wheel again because we're not getting through this season so I think Matt Duchesne and Tarasenko were just scoring way too many goals that the game couldn't handle it we're moving Moving on to the New Jersey Devils and Brett Pesci welcome to the team because I already know I'm bringing you here. So not too much consideration has to go into this selection right here. Brett Pesci you're coming to the team 86 overall defenseman. Yeah you're going to be great for us. We need a good defensive defenseman on this team and that's what you're going to provide for us. Now Brett Pesci you're a great defensive defenseman and what makes the most sense for us? Well to have you play left wing. We need somebody to score on this team so you can play some forward minutes for us. We have a complete forward line now. It's going to consist of Brett Pesci, Matt Duchesne, Vladimir Tarasenko. One of these guys is not like the other and we already know who that is Vladimir Tarasenko of course just superior to the rest of these guys so we're finally going to be seeing some trades here but it's not the big time trade that you expect Kemmel and Burke are going to be sent over to the Minnesota Wild and Brodeen and Marcus Fleener are going to be sent over to Nashville so Nashville's making a massive push here okay I don't know what's going on here but right after that deal happened the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to lose to the Wildcats we have four players on this team we have Stolarz we have Brett Pesci Matt Duchesne Vladimir Tarasenko and you lost to us like you have to abolish your franchise after this win right here we allowed nine goals we allowed four goals we allowed 10 goals 12 goals nine goals you're telling me you could only score one against us ain't no way that just happened pittsburgh you are the biggest disappointment in the nhl oh by the way about three games after we beat the pittsburgh penguins the game crashed so yeah we're not gonna be able to register that one win but we're keeping it in our hearts no nah, but this game's really hating on me we finally find a way to win a game and then the game immediately crashes after that steven stamkos could be a good player jonathan marshall so would be a great player barry trotz not only were you a fantastic coach but you might be a better gm because you are absolutely cooking right Right now so although nashville picked up a ton of great players we're only allowed to select one here but i already know who we're going to be selecting no question about it steven stankos welcome to the team a 90 overall one of the few 90 overalls that we're going to get he actually might be the only 90 overall so stammer welcome to the wisconsin wildcats it's time for you to lead this team to greatness now with the addition of steven stankos we actually have a really good first line here steven stankos matt duchene tarasenko and then we're going to have one defenseman here that's going to be brett pesci he's going to be on the top pairing alongside a jordan nhl we might not have a complete lineup yet but we're only one defenseman away and with the way the selections are going so far this team's gonna be seeing success pretty early in this video i mean to be fair we've already won one game and we won one game way earlier than i was expecting so we're already seeing way more success yeah so you remember how i was talking about this team seeing a ton of success the game crashed before we even got to game number one that's a tough luck no nah, but real talk how does something like that happen i talk about all the success this team's about to see and then that proceeds to happen we don't even get through game number one the boston bruins you know they picked up some guys in free agency they got zador off they picked up Elias Lindholm so those are going to be two of our options so as I mentioned the Boston Bruins two notable additions to the team one of them being Elias Lindholm the other being Zadorov. of the two players that we can select here I think I'm going to go with Elias Lindholm 87 overall also if the ratings do seem a bit off I'm just using a created roster that somebody made so yeah in this created roster Elias Lindholm's an 87 overall I'm not going to complain about that he'll be a great addition to the team now with the addition of Elias Lindholm the forward core continues to see upgrades here but it's still not going to be good enough look at all the zero overalls here it's going to take a handful more wheel spins and that's just for the forward core like here's the defense we have brett pesci and that's about it so yeah that's gonna be looking weak as well the goaltending we're still missing a backup goaltender this team's at least 10 spins away so unfortunately even with adding a couple more players to this team we're not gonna be able to sneak out a win this season to be fair that one year we beat the pittsburgh penguins that shouldn't have happened we got ourselves an 0-2 record here while only scoring 60 goals 
Like, we would have beat the Pittsburgh Penguins, and that team probably only scored 30 goals the entire season. That is absolutely wild. Like, the top scorer on this team, Steven Stamkos, 48 points. Then it's going to be Matt Duchesne, Vladimir Tarasenko. He's picking up 25 goals here. But this team right here, minus Elias Lindholm and minus Steven Stamkos, I believe, somehow won a game. Like, we won a game with only three or four players under contract. But that's neither here nor there. Stolar is where your number's looking like this season. A 901, a 568. Honestly, that's not too bad considering we basically have nothing in front of you. Meanwhile, the Montreal Canadiens vault teams make it into the Stanley Cup final to take on another Canadian team, the Winnipeg Jets, and Montreal is coming out on top in a seven game series. Now that is certainly not happening. Like an all Canadian matchup is one thing, but the Montreal Canadiens and Winnipeg Jets meeting in the Stanley Cup final? Yeah, that's not happening. We're moving on over to the New York Islanders. I can't really recall what the Islanders have done in free agency other than Anthony Duclair. That honestly might be the only move they've made. So the New York Islanders have done absolutely nothing in free agency. Like they've done less than the St. Louis Blues have, and that's saying something. But Anthony Duclair, you're going to be the lone player to join the team here. 82 overall. It certainly could be a lot worse. So we're slowly building out a solid forward core, but we do have to improve the defense here. Duclair is going to be a good third, maybe even fourth line guy in the future, but he's definitely not going to be a second line player for us. But for now, he's good enough. So of course, the addition of Duclair is going to be helping this team, but it's not really helping too much. 0 82 once again, but we only scored 62 goals. So a very slight improvement from last season. You could almost call it no improvement at all. Like this team did basically nothing. Duclair, you picked up 16 points here. So I mean, it's better than zero. And when it comes to goaltending, Stolarz, you did a 902, which is better than last season. A 548, I also believe is better than last season. But yeah, let's face it. The Wildcats just aren't a good team right now. When it comes to the Stanley Cup final, we're going to see the Boston Bruins sweeping the Nashville Predators. But I don't even care about that. Nashville, you are going to be such a good team next season. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I have very high expectations for you guys. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see who we're going to be landing on next. The Seattle Kraken would be a great option. The St. Louis Blues. Literally the only team I didn't want to get other than Anaheim. So yeah, Kasperi Kapanen, you're joining the team. You're the only option. So as I said, Kapanen, you're going to be the lone player joining the team because you're the only free agent signed from the St. Louis Blues. But what are my thoughts on what St. Louis did during the offseason here? I am perfectly fine with us making no free agent signing deals. We have to embrace the rebuild. This team is not competing for a Stanley Cup next season. We're not doing it the season after that. This team is like three, four years away from actually getting back to competing again. We got to let the young guys develop. Let's embrace the rebuild. Let's not try to win and we clearly can't. Also, there was a lot of really bad bags given out yesterday, and I'm just happy none of them were for the St. Louis Blues. We didn't make any really stupid signings, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So we have two forward lines now with Anthony Duclair, Elias Lindholm, and Kasperi Kapanen holding it down there, but this is clearly not a good second line. We're going to need some better upgrades in the future, but for now, it's better than having zero overalls. Duclair and Kapanen will be some good fourth line guys in the future, but for now, they're but for now, they're all that we have, and we're going to make it work. So we finally have some good news. This is the first official season where we're going to record some wins here. A 372-2 record. Kasperi Kapanen, you were the missing piece. Ignore the fact that St. Louis finished third last in the entire league. We're not going to talk about that. But Kasperi Kapanen, you might be the most valuable player to this team right now. How many points did you record this season? 50, 60, maybe even 70. One goal, 12 assists for 13 points. So that happened. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. Stolarz, you were great. You even picked up a shutout this season. No, this team's just built different right now. We are one of the best in the entire league. Our record just didn't show it. Meanwhile, the Seattle Kraken, they're going to be taking home their first Stanley Cup in history. While the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're going to lose in the Stanley Cup final. That seems about right. Speaking of the Seattle Kraken, that would be one team I would love to land on here because they got a ton of great players over the offseason. The Calgary Flames, on the other hand, didn't really do too much. They picked up a lot of depth pieces. They're not going to be competing this year. But you know what? There are some good options here still. So I don't 100% recall what the Calgary Flames did, but I know they got some depth pieces here. No superstars. Mantha would be a decent enough pickup. Jake Bean could be a good pickup for us. I think we might go with Jake Bean here. He'd be a good defenseman for us. We only have one so far, and that's being Brett Pesci. So yeah, Jake Bean, you're going to be the guy we acquire here. 82 overall, it could be a lot worse. So the defense has seen a massive upgrade here. As Brett Pesci's finally going to have somebody he can play alongside. That's going to be Jake Bean. He might only be an 82 overall, but it's certainly better than the zero overall he had before. So although Jake Bean helped the defense a lot here, he's not really helping the offense as we're not going to see as much success here. A 3-79 and record, so we're actually worse than we were last season. Jake Bean, what are you really doing here? You're supposed to help this team succeed, and we're seeing no success. Duchesne's leading the way, only 41 points here. Tarasenko was only picking up 20 goals. Kasperi Kapanen in a massive season for him, though. 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. He was doing everything in his power to help this team succeed, but they're not seeing success. Meanwhile, Jake Bean, 15 points isn't actually the end of the world. Meanwhile, Stolar is a bit of a step back. He's not picking up a shot with 
this season. Last season might have been a fluke, though. He might have just played incredible, but this season he's not going to be playing at that same level. Meanwhile, the Toronto Maple Leafs are Stanley Cup champions, taking on the Winnipeg Jets. What's with all these Canadian matchups? Because this shouldn't be happening. Like, how are we seeing the Winnipeg Jets in the Stanley Cup Finals so frequently? They're not really that great of a team. But you know what? We're about to pick someone up that just played for the Winnipeg Jets. His name is Sean Monaghan, and he just recently signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets. So I shouldn't really call Winnipeg a bad team because they were one of the best in the NHL, but for the amount of guys they lost, they're not going to be nearly as good of a team next season. Sean Monaghan, you're going to be the next player acquiring here. You're going to be a good forward for us in 85 overall. You're going to play some top line minutes. You're definitely going to be an upgrade from Anthony Duclair. He's Kasperi Kapan. He's got to stay on that second line. He's looking elite so far. Now we're five forwards away from completing our forward core, but the defense is still looking very weak here. We've only added two defensemen, Jake Bean and Brett Pesci, so we should probably start focusing on that. All right, it was only a matter of time before this happened, Rodin's off to the Red Wings and they're selling the farm here. Only one trade at the deadline? Detroit's cooked. Now Sean Monaghan, you're completely turning this team around. A 472 and 6 record, 14 points this season, but on top of that, 113 goals. Never thought I would see the day. I never thought I would see the day that the Wisconsin Wildcats would be this dominant. And look at Vladimir Tarasenko leading the way here. 54 points. He's got 27 goals. Why does he have less X factors and why is he down to an 84 overall? What's going on here? This shouldn't have happened. They shouldn't be declining right now. No, seriously, what's happening? I I've never seen players decline during season mode, but no, that's actually happened here. Vladimir Tarasenko, we've dropped to an 84 overall. This game just doesn't want me to succeed here. Stolars are doing everything you possibly can, but Vladimir Tarasenko declining. That is absolutely disrespectful to my king, the National Predator Stanley Cup champion. Show to them. I mean, maybe players do decline in season mode, and I've just never noticed it before, but yeah, that is something new. The Washington Capitals didn't really make too many free agent moves. They made a handful of trades, though. So I don't think we're going to be getting any elite players from them. Now, I know for a fact the Washington Capitals didn't make any major moves, but there is one guy they signed. That's going to be Matt Roy. He's going to be a great defenseman for us, a two-way defender. He's definitely going to be helping the defensive core here because as of right now, that's not looking too good. The defense is getting an upgrade with Matt Roy. Him and Brett Pesci are going to be a good one-two combo here. But you know what? We still need some more help on the left side. Jake Bean's not going to be enough, but eventually he could move down and be one of our right defensemen. So if we have Brett Pesci, Matt Roy, and Jake Bean on the right side and then fill up the left side here, we actually could have a really good defense but for now jake bean you gotta play some left side minutes we have nobody else so matt roy is gonna be helping a ton here we're moving up to an 872 and 2 record we might not have a ton more points than we did last season last season we had 14 now we have 18 but we won a handful more games and that's really what matters here the offense continues to get better while the defense obviously that has to be better with the addition of matt roy i always forget if it's matt roy or matt wall all i know is he's on this team and he's playing good defense stammer's picking up 63 points here lindholm's picking up 51 duchene 45 vladimir Tarasenko, what happened to our king who's up to an 86 overall and didn't decline here i just don't understand this game i really don't stole large is picking up all eight wins this season a 901 to 462 just keep on doing your thing we're picking up a decent amount of wins here meanwhile the montreal canadians they're going to be winning they're going to take down the utah hockey club in the stanley cup final in a seven game series also i got to give utah a ton of props the second that team left arizona and they got a competent owner they started making winning moves sergachev's going to be helping your team a ton you made a couple of good moves in free agency now i'm actually excited to see what utah is going to do so we've added a handful of forwards to this team and half the defensive core is filled out but you know what we could use a new goaltender i don't believe the la king is going to provide that for us but you know what we should be able to get some upgrades to this team now off the top of my head i can't think of any free agent signs for the la kings i just really can't i don't think they brought in any superstar players warren fogel i think you're going to be the guy we bring to the team because i can't really think of anyone else darcy kemper you acquired through trade joel evanson you were given an absolute bag i have no clue why you were given that much money but you were and secure the bag i mean i'm not mad about it but of all these players here, I think we've got to go with Warren Fogel. 83 overall, he can be a good fourth line guy for us. So although we continue to fill out the forward core here, I am getting a bit concerned about the bottom six. Like Warren Fogel, Anthony Duclair, and Kasperi Captain, by rights, you're going to be fourth line guys. But for the amount of low overall players we've been adding, you guys might end up being third line players, and I don't really want that for the team. I think we need a couple more superstars here. On top of superstars, we also need some more defensemen, because as we know, we're not even close to being done here. Yeah, so this season was very forgettable. Four wins, Stamkos leads away with 52 points seattle wins the stanley cup we don't need to look into these numbers the fact that this team only had four wins this season what are we really doing here like we should be way better than this warren fogel you might be my biggest ops we add you to the team and we get significantly worse here when it comes to the montreal canadians honestly i cannot recall a single move this team's made during free agency so yeah this might not be ideal like i'm so serious when i say i cannot name a single free agent sign that the montreal canadians did here i know they gave slikovsky an extension but really when it comes to free agent signings what did this team do 
you. I think they did a whole lot of nothing. To be fair, what is this team actually going to do here? Yeah, this team made no free agent signings. So yeah, I guess we're going to have to spin the wheel again. Unless one of these guys down here was a free agent, but I don't think so. I think this team did absolutely nothing. I mean, to be completely fair, what is Montreal really going to do? Go out there and sign Steven Stamkos? Like, that makes absolutely no sense for them. The Ottawa Senators, I actually don't recall what you guys have done either. I know you trade for Linus Olmark. I know you re-signed a couple guys. But when it comes to actual free agent signings, I don't remember what you did. Like, I can't really remember who the Ottawa Senators brought to the team. They had Linus Allmark in the trade. I just remembered. David Perron, welcome to the team here. St. Louis legend, 84 overall. You can play some third line mints for us, but you're not the superstar that we need. We need another superstar here, and ideally a superstar defenseman. Like, at the end of the day, having 84 overall David Perron on the second line isn't the worst thing in the world, but that fourth line that we have better bring in some superstars. Now, David Perron, of course, you're a St. Louis legend, but I did not realize you're one of the most valuable players in the league. A 16-59-7 record. You can play completely saved the Wisconsin Wildcats. Without you, we're not even close to this record. Like seriously, David Perron single-handedly saved this team right here. Stamkos might have led the way, but you know what? We're focused on David Perron. Look at those 32 points he had. 15 goals, 17 assists. This man led the way, the most valuable player to this team. Stone Lars was pretty good as well. A 9-12, a 381 with two shutouts. Okay, this man was actually incredible this season. If we get a backup goaltender, we're looking at a 25 win season. Joe NHL, you're not cutting it here. Ricky LaFleur would be so much better than you, but unfortunately, he's just away from the team right now. Ricky LaFleur is off to the trailer park right now. He's got some work that has to be done, but he'll be back soon. Meanwhile, in the Stanley Cup final, we're going to see the Vancouver Canucks taking down the Washington Capitals in a six-game series. Yeah, unfortunately, Ricky LaFleur, he's a bit busy right now working at the trailer park. He's having to move some plants around, but once he's done that, he'll be ready to play again. We're going to be getting an elite team here in the Seattle Kraken. I already know who I'm bringing to the team. No question about it. Welcome, Brandon Montour. So without a doubt, we're bringing Brandon Montour to the team here. The only thing that's going to hurt us is the right defenseman. What we need right now is a left defenseman. But we can make it work here. Our right side is going to be loaded. It's going to be Brandon Montour. It's going to be Brett Pesci. It's going to be Matt Roy. Those are three amazing players. We're going to work through the issues that we're going to have defensively, especially when it comes to the left side. So the top pairing is going to be Jake Bean and Brandon Montour here. And Matt Roy, technically I could play you on the first pairing, I don't think that's really fair. You are a right defenseman. So if you are going to play on the left side, you have to play on the lowest line possible. That's going to be the second pairing here. So Matt Roy and Brett Pesci on that second pairing. That's going to be a really good line. I think we're looking at at least 25 wins here. Even though we don't have a backup goaltender right now, with the defense looking the way it is, we're going to win some games. No, I have absolutely nothing to say here. Our defense got significantly better. So what happened? Our team got significantly worse. A 13-66-3 record. I couldn't even explain what happened here. We were scoring 2.29 goals per game but allowing 5.29. Now, I didn't expect the defense to get significantly better. Like, we did add one defenseman, but one defenseman is not going to be enough here. Brandon Montour, you are our best defenseman. 49 points here, 9 goals, 40 assists. I'm going to look at the goaltending numbers. Stolarz, you were not that guy this season. An 893 and a 429, that's the big difference. If this guy plays the way he did last season, no question about it, we're winning 25 games here. But he took a significant step back, and that's going to be hurting us here. The Vancouver Canucks are winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups here. This time, they're taking down the Carolina Hurricanes, but a season like this will never happen again. That's a stick on the ice statement. From here on out, we're getting better. So we all know this team has to get better. We really need a backup goaltender here. The Vegas Golden Knights are giving us that. Samsonov, welcome to the team. Like in reality, a Stolarz and Samsonov tandem is definitely not the best in the world here. But you know what? It could be a lot worse. We're going to be running 284s here. They're going to be able to stop the puck from time to time. I feel like we're in a good spot with this acquisition. We're finally going to have our two goaltenders. No longer do we have zero overall in between the pipes. Now we're going to win 25 games. Nothing is holding us back other than the fourth line and our third defensive pairing. So we have our goaltending tandem and there's only one thing that concerns me. Stolarz, he's now a current member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Samsonov, a former member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think we have too much Toronto Maple Leaf DNA on this team. I think that might hold us back in the future, but only time will tell when it comes to that. Plain and simple, no comment with this team. No comment whatsoever. A 13-62 and 7 record. I have nothing to say about this team. I don't care about the scoring, but I do care about the goaltending. I need to know what both of these guys did this season. I mean, the plus minuses weren't necessarily horrible for the fact that we didn't have a fourth line or third defensive pairing, but the goaltending. Samsonov, yeah, you're not that guy. You are not that guy, pal. An 897 and a 410. Stolarz, you were awful. A 325 and 5 record. I can't believe this just happened. We are splitting starts with these guys right here, and they still can't win games. I knew it would be that Toronto Maple Leafs DNA holding us back, the Colorado Avalanche winning the Stanley Cup here, but it's the fact that we have a current member of the Toronto Maple Leafs and a former member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Success and Toronto Maple Leaf goaltenders don't go hand in hand. However, there is one guy looking to change that, and his name's Joseph Wall. I believe in the wall.
So we've got our goaltending tandem set. We just need elite forwards and elite defensemen from here on out. I don't believe the Vancouver Canucks are giving us that. Who did they sign in free agency? I cannot remember. I know that Jake DeBrusque. They signed Jake DeBrusque. I know that. So Jake DeBrusque, welcome to the team. Because outside of you, I honestly can't remember who else you guys signed. So Jake DeBrusque, you're going to be the player that we're picking up from the Vancouver Canucks. Other than you, they didn't really pick up any superstar players. And I'm using the word superstar very lightly here. Oh yeah, they did pick up Vincent DeHarnay. That is a move. It's a very bad move, but it's also a move. Vancouver, I have no clue what you were cooking up with that signing. That one is awful. So we're changing things up a little bit this year. Matt Duchesne, Steven Stamkos, Tarasenko on the first line. That's staying the same. The second line is shifting a bit. David Perron, Elias Lindholm, Jake DeBrusque, and then Warren Fogle, Sean Monaghan, Anthony Duclair. I want an elite centerman playing some third line minutes for us. And Sean Monaghan, you're going to be that guy. Elias Lindholm, you're going to hold it down the second line. We just need some more center depth here. And by putting Sean Monaghan in the third line, that's what it's going to be giving us. We're going to ignore the fact that Kasperi Kapanen is also playing center here. Just don't worry about that one. So there is one thing this team can't do right now, and I don't know why they can't do it. Win in overtime or win in a shootout, a 13-57 and 12 record. We had 12 OT losses. That has to be the most in the entire league, just behind the Chicago Blackhawks who picked up 13. This team should be a lot better than this. Like to be fair, this team was not bad this season. Stamkos is picking up 71, Tarasenko is picking up 61, Lindholm is picking up 60. The team objectively was actually really good. We just didn't win any overtime games and we didn't win any games in a shootout. Samsonov, you are clearly not the guy. Stole Stolars, you are not the guy anymore. I don't know what's happening here. You were looking elite through the first 10 to 15 simulations. I don't know what's changed. Now you just suck. It's that Toronto Maple Leafs DNA, man. That's what's holding us back. If we didn't bring in these guys from Toronto, we would be a lot better. And Toronto's winning the Stanley Cup. You didn't see that. So we're just going to pretend that we didn't see the Toronto Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup after I was making fun of them. The Carolina Hurricanes... I kind of wish we landed on the Empton Oilers. Actually, I take that back. Carolina, you did pick up a decent defenseman. Now, Carolina, you might have lost a handful of defensemen, but you did just add one to the team, and his name is Shane Gossespair. 86 overall, he's going to be great for this team. I believe he plays both left and right side. Yes, he does. So he's going to be playing some big left side minutes for us. Shane Gossespair, I think you've been the missing piece all along. Now that our defense is looking elite, we're here to stay. Or at least win some games in overtime. Like, we can't be losing 12 in OT again. So with the addition of Shane Gossespair, I think we're only about two or three players away. Gossespair Bear and Montour are going to be manning that first pairing. That's going to be Brett Pesci and Jake Bean. We're going to have a Joe NHL alongside Matt Roy. Once we bring in one more defense, then we're going to be close to making the playoffs. I think our top nine is going to be good enough to get us into the postseason. Maybe get 38 wins, 39 wins. Hopefully that's going to be enough. But yeah, this fourth line, not looking good right now. Now the Wisconsin Wildcats, this is what I'm expecting from you guys. A 23-52-7 record. We're pretty close to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Only 15 points away. This team's finally figuring it out here. The goaltending was way better. I don't even care about our offense offensive numbers. Steven Stamkos, you had 73. I gotta look at Samsonov. I gotta look at Stolarz because those guys were absolutely locked in this season. Stolarz, you had more wins than Samsonov in less games. A 12-27-1 record. A 9-0-2 and a 364. I think you gotta be the guy from here on out. Once we get to the playoffs, it's Stolarz's time to shine. Samsonov, I don't care if you play more games. I don't care if you put up better numbers that season. We get to the playoffs. From here on out, Stolarz is the number one and I'm never gonna change my mind on that. Like time and time again, that man has stepped up and he's proved that he's the number one here. The Seattle Kraken are going to be Stanley Cup champions, taking down the Carolina Hurricanes, but Stolarz, you proved who's the number one now. Like whatever happens during the regular season means absolutely nothing. Once the postseason comes around, we know who our guy is. We're landing on the Winnipeg Jets. Who's the free agent that they picked up? I don't know. Why can I just not remember any of the free agents? Like it's been one day and I cannot remember who's gone to which team. I know Winnipeg's lost a ton of pieces. Don't really recall who they've added. Okay, unless I'm completely bugging, Winnipeg didn't actually do anything other than bringing Eric Comrie to the team. Outside of that, it's the exact same team. So Winnipeg, we're not gonna be doing anything here. We already have our two goaltenders and you have nobody else that you can offer here. So nobody's gonna be picked up from Winnipeg here. So it's time to spin the wheel once again. We're gonna be landing on the Colorado Avalanche. I would have preferred the Chicago Blackhawks. Then we would have Able to pick up Tower Bertuzzi, but Colorado, you were probably cooking during free agency. I know you brought Jonathan Drewan back to the team, so that might be the guy we select here, because you probably didn't really have that much cap space, if we're being honest. So we didn't select anyone from Winnipeg. We're moving on to the Colorado Avalanche here, and I think it's got to be Jonathan Drewan. He was technically a free agent for a very short time, and then he was re signed. So yeah, he's going to be joining the Wisconsin Wildcats here. This team's screwed, aren't we? Now, before Jonathan Drewan is solidified on this team, Calvin DeHaan wouldn't be the worst player in the world. He's an 81 overall defenseman, he's a good defensive defenseman. I think we go with Calvin DeHaan. He's going to be able to hold it down defensively. I don't need him to put up great offensive numbers. He's going to play third pairing minutes for us. 
this is actually the move we're going to go with we're passing on Jonathan Drouin so through making that selection from here on out we're only selecting forwards and I think that's a smart decision because I think there's better forwards remaining than Jonathan Drouin out there like if we land on Chicago we're bringing Tyler Bertuzzi to the team and I definitely want that even if we land on the San Jose Sharks that's going to be Tyler Toffoli so if we can bring either of the Tyler's to the team I won't complain about that so the defense is set Shane Gosses there Brandon Montour Brett Pesci Jake Bean Calvin DeHaan Matt Roy the right side's definitely going to be helping the left side a ton here like Pesci and Matt Roy they're gonna be great additions here I'm not too sure if Calvin DeHaan and Jake Bean are gonna be enough but with these two guys at their side I think it will be meanwhile when it comes to the first pairing Brandon Montour Shane Goss you guys can definitely be the answer for us so it's finally happened after years and years of disappointment the Wisconsin Wildcats have figured it out 27th in the entire league we're better than Columbus we're better than Montreal better than Chicago better than San Jose better than the Calgary Flames none of them can do anything to the Wisconsin Wildcats we're just better than them plain and simple Utah we're coming for you next only three points behind this team's gonna be at the top of the league sooner than later and with Steven Stamkos leading the way putting up 89 points it won't be too long look at that plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 Stamkos Tarasenko Duchesne these guys are a big three and nobody can stop them and when it comes to goaltending Stolarz 10 wins this season a 907 and a 342 but hold on Samsonov you were actually looking really good if you continue to put up numbers like this you can be our goaltender for the postseason I'm taking back what I said last season Samsonov you actually were pretty good here so I guess it's really going to depend on who's the hottest goaltender going into the playoffs and then that's who's going to play for us. Meanwhile, the Winnipeg Jets, they're going to be Stanley Cup champions here. They didn't make any changes to their team. If anything, they actually got a bit worse because they lost a handful of guys. But that doesn't matter. They're somehow still Stanley Cup champs. So congrats to Winnipeg on that Stanley Cup. You know what? It's not a Stanley Cup for the Wildcats, so we got to keep on spinning. Anaheim, I don't even think we're going to waste our time here. Like, I know for a fact, the only team that did less than St. Louis in day number one was the Anaheim Ducks. That team brought in absolutely nobody. Philadelphia Flyers, I actually don't recall what they did. I think they made some nice signings, but I really don't remember. All right, call me a straight yapper. I don't even know why I was trying to gas up the Philadelphia Flyers. It's probably because they signed Mishkov. Yeah, that was really the only player they've signed over the past couple days, but only notable player. We're landing on the Edmonton Oilers. Adam Henrique, you wouldn't be a bad pickup because you technically were signed after free agency started. But you know what? We got to go with Jeff Skinner. Now, although this is a happy day for a lot of players, like they just secured bags. Jeff Skinner, you might have got bought out, but you signed with the Edmonton Oilers and you have a really good shot at a Stanley Cup. But it's also a sad day. You know why? Because this is the final video on the channel where i get to use cap friendly the way i've been sorting free agency by teams is using cap friendly but it's only a matter of time before that website gets shut down because the washington capitals bought it still the biggest ops of all time but yeah the final video where we get to use cap friendly it's the end of an era i mean we'll just move on to puckpedia but no it's just a sad day losing cap friendly there's a lot of good memories with that website so we're one forward away from completing this team right now matt duchene stam coast and tarasenko are going to hold it down the first line then it's going to be david perron elias lynn home and jeff skin on the second the bottom six isn't looking as bad as i thought it would be but if we can add one more elite player here i think we'll be stanley cup bound now i'm very sad to say but the wildcats aren't gonna be getting into the playoffs here but we were actually pretty close okay maybe we weren't as close as i thought 26 in the entire league a 33 33 and 16 record i thought the 16 ot losses would have us like right up here i thought we'd be 20th in the entire league but not quite yet the offense still isn't good enough for this team but let's face it our defense also isn't that good here we have a zero overall on the team that's not gonna be helping us but you know what it really wasn't the zero overall holding us back it was the fact that brandon montour was minus 34 like we did not have good plus minuses on this team okay joe nhl here was minus 40 so i think that is actually gonna be skewing these numbers quite a bit once we have no zero overalls on this team i think we're gonna be looking a lot better but samson off this ain't it if you're gonna be our superstar goaltender and lead us to a stanley cup i can't be having an 895 and a 336 you gotta be better than that you know you have to be better than that but you know what we're one spin away from not having any zero overalls left the dallas stars are winning the stanley cup here things are about to change so here we go one final spin here i need the chicago blackhawks we need a great team that actually worked out perfectly tower bertuzzi welcome to the team you're the missing piece for us now it's time to go and win so when it comes to the blackhawks i've been so focused on a guy like tower bertuzzi i completely forgot about tivu teravainen and that's actually who we're going to be adding here oh i've already added him to the team all right tivu teravainen welcome to the team 85 overall chicago's actually done a very good job of surrounding bedard with great players so i can't wait to see what he does this season so we finally have a complete nhl team matt duchene steven stamp Coast Tara Cycle on the first line, Jeff Skinner, Elias Lindholm, Tara Vine on the second line, Dave Perron, Sean Monahan, Jake DeBrusque, Gasperi Kapanen, Warren Fogel, Anthony Duclair. That's going to round out our forward core. When it comes to the defense, Shane Gossesbury, Brandon Montour, Brett Pesci, Jake Bean, Calvin DeHaan, Matt Roy. And then when it comes to the goaltending, that's the lone question mark we have here. Stole large, you've been great, but for some reason, Samsonov continues to play more games. Not really too sure why. But as long as both of these guys play solid here, we shouldn't make the playoffs. 
So it's finally happened the Wisconsin Wildcats are in the playoffs, but there's a couple things I can't overlook. Number one, we're actually third in our division because the Edmonton Oilers and Vancouver Canucks are ahead of us. But let's look at the top five. Winnipeg, Vancouver, Edmonton, Wisconsin, Toronto. Four of the top five teams are all Canadian. What's going on here? What's really going on? Canada's taking over the NHL right now. Steven Stamko is 73 points. Terry Cycles got 63. Matt Duchesne, not a bad season for him. He's picking up 58. But the funniest thing about having four of the top five teams being Canadian is somehow all of them are going to choke in the postseason and none of them are going to win a Stanley Cup. Samsonov, you were incredible this season. 32 wins, 7 shots, and 914 to 270. So we're going to ride with you for this postseason run. You better step up when it matters most. We got the Edmonton Oilers in the first round. It's going to be a tough matchup. But you know what? Wisconsin's built different. All right, we're not even going to jump into Simcast for this one. We're down 3 1 against the Edmonton Oilers. Safe to say we're done here. We're losing 6 to 3 in game 5. Yeah, let's go ahead and add some more players. So I don't care who wins the Stanley Cup. This team clearly needs more players here. We're going to be landing on the Detroit Red Wings. Stevie Y, I don't think you made any big signings. So when it comes to the Red Wings, Stevie Y, you really weren't cooking during free agency. Honestly, I don't really know what you're doing, but you know what? I'm going to trust in Stevie Y. The plan's going to work out. But there was one guy who was technically a free agent for a very short period of time. I'm talking Patrick Kane. He signed on July 1st, meaning he was a free agent for a very short period of time, and now he's on the Wisconsin Wildcats. So these are what the lines are going to look like. Patrick Kane's going to be on the first line alongside Steven Stamkos and Jeff Skinner. I want to make sure that we have great center depth here. So Sean Monaghan, you're going to play some fourth line minutes. Matt Duchesne, you're going to play some third line minutes. I think this is the best thing for the team. Yeah, plain and simple, I got nothing to say here. Patrick Kane, you are not helping the team in the slightest. 11th in the entire league, a 43-31-8 record. The goaltending must have been atrocious here. Because Patrick Kane, he's picking up 91 points. Steven Stamkos, 85. Now I really want to know who held this team back because there's a lot of great plus minuses here. There isn't a ton of really bad plus minuses i just don't think this team is good enough plain and simple the goaltending where are these numbers looking like samson off 33 wins two shots a 908 and a 283 and stolars you weren't good enough this season plain and simple you had a losing record stolars wasn't nearly as good this season that's gonna be the big difference but you know what i do believe we have a great team here we got the sale cracking in the first round this team just has to perform so wisconsin's here to play now they're actually looking really good through the first four games they have a 3-1 series lead and they're gonna close it out in game number five here a massive 5-1 win i think this team actually she might be able to win. I don't care what the regular season record is, this team's showing up in the playoffs and they're showing up when it matters most. So we took down an American team in the Seattle Kraken, but now it's time to move on to a Canadian one. We have the Vancouver Canucks up next. They might have had a better record than us. You know what? I think the Wildcats are playing well above their record. Well, we were definitely playing above our record in the first round, but now we certainly are. We're facing elimination heading into game five. So here we go. We got game five elimination here. The Wildcats better show up when it matters most. And so far they've been doing that. Tarasenko's got two goals so far. It's time for him to pick up the hat trick. But if he is going to pick up the hat trick it has to be an overtime here it's not going to take single overtime we're going to need double overtime to settle this one and elias patterson he's going to find the back of the net so we only have a handful of teams left here and i don't know how many great free agents they picked up the Buffalo Sabres, I don't think they did anything. Now, I guess there is one signing that the Buffalo Sabres did do, but I don't know how much it's going to be helping the team here. Jason Zucker. Yeah, Jason Zucker is the best thing we can do here. 82 overall. Yeah, we're cooked. All right, so this team was a massive disappointment last season, but you know what? We didn't have the legend in Jason Zucker. He's going to single-handedly turn this team around. I really hope he does. If not, this could be a very long video because I don't know how long it's going to take for us to win a cup. So I never thought it would reach this point, but here we are. We have one more season to win. Joe Pavelski, you're going to join the team. Team here i'm gonna go out and find the best free agents available because there is no reason that this team right here should be 22nd in the entire league we were 22nd in the entire league missed the playoffs two years ago we were fourth and here we are 22nd in the entire league joe pavelski i don't care if you've retired or not you're joining this team because you're technically a free agent i'm going to find the highest overall guys that were free agents they're coming to this team right now we have one more season to win but ain't no way this team just missed the playoffs. So we have one more chance at the Stanley Cup here. It's time to bring in some superstars. So this is what I'm cooking up here. We're immediately going to free agents. Joe Pavelski, you're going to join the team. Max Pacioretty, you can join the team here. Ryan Suter, you can be a good left defenseman for us. You're going to join the team here. Now we have to go over to the San Jose Sharks. Tower Toffoli, you're going to join the team here. We're going to add Alex Wenberg as well here. I'm not too sure if he's going to play on this team, but you know what? He could be a good asset. The Pittsburgh Penguins, they didn't make any massive free agent signings. The Philadelphia Flyers didn't. Ottawa Senators didn't. New York Rangers, I don't recall if they made any big signings. No, they didn't. So we're not adding anyone from that team. I'm going over to the Nashville Predators. Jonathan Marcheseau, you're going to join this team here. And Brady Shea, you're going to join this team. I'm taking everyone from the Nashville Predators. I'm taking the best guys available in free agency. I'm taking Tower Toffoli. We have one more shot to win a Stanley Cup. If the Wisconsin Wildcats can't do that this season, then we're calling it a video.
All right, so it's a team of free agents here. Steven Stamkos, Jeff Skinner, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Marcheseau, Joe Pavelski, Tivo Teravainen, Tower Toffoli, Matt Duchesne, Elias Lindholm, Vladimir Tarasenko, Alex Wenberg, David Perron. When it comes to the defense, Gosses Bear, Brady Shea, Ryan Suter, Matt Roy, Brett Pesci, Brandon Montour, and then the goaltending. We still have Stolars. We still have some Sonoff. If this team doesn't finish top five, it's 100% rigged, and there's literally nothing I can do about it. No, I'm so incredibly concerned here. We're first in the entire league of 54, 18, and 10 record that doesn't mean anything to me patrick kane lean the way in points with 88 means nothing joe pavelski 83 stamco 77 marcia so 60 none of that means anything to me the goaltending it was okay that's all i can say i mean it was actually really good this season 917 to 251 and then a 922 to 236 but this means nothing to me you know why because of who we have to take on the first round we're guaranteed to lose in the first round it's the utah hockey club i can guarantee right now this team loses to utah Man, we really lost the first two games here, and I was thinking we were going to get swept. As long as we don't lose game number six, I'm going to be fine. That was actually game number five, but don't lose game number six here. I don't want to go to game seven. It's really coming down to one game. So here we go. The Wildcats taking on the Utah Hockey Club. We can't afford to lose here. We're exchanging goals in the first period, and we're going to do the same in the second here. What's going to happen in the third period? We lost. I give up. We have the same logo, Utah and Wisconsin apparently have the same logo right now. We're not going to worry about that. This team's just not winning a Stanley Cup. So would it be possible for the best free agents to win a Stanley Cup? I just put the best free agents on one team and we couldn't even get out of the first round. The Wisconsin Wildcats are dead here and they're not coming back ever again.